but um, in general, I think I, I must continue and I must not be stopped by the intimidation. Nathan Law is a central figure of the Hong Kong democracy movement. A student activist turned opposition MP, in 2016 he became the youngest lawmaker in Hong Kong. But he since fled the region and was awarded political asylum in the UK, fearing what he called the unknown dangers of staying. He claims that China is stripping away Hong Kong's freedoms, that democracy there is in a state of emergency. He came to Durham to give a speech on the current situation in Hong Kong and spoke in a union debate over whether the country should boycott the Winter Olympics in Beijing. And Pal TV secured an exclusive interview with him. Um, the first question we have is, how do you balance a fear of personal safety with the mission of spreading truth and advocating for freedom as a political advocate? As an activist, we all understand how far reaching China's reach could be. We've seen incidents and we've heard things that um, exile activists are being persecuted or some extradition were made. Um, so these are actually like definitely worrying signs for us. Um, but I think the only reason why they they do this intimidation is to stop you from what you're doing. Um, you're creating a lot of momentum for the world to take uh, the human rights crimes seriously and try to hold them accountable. So for me, I'll still continue to do it. I just have to be very vigilant. Um, and also talk to your local authority, uh, whether they have any intelligence about um, whether they're, they're, there's any danger for your personal safety. But um, in general, I think I, I must continue and I must not be stopped by the intimidation. So going off of that, how do you think universities can create safe spaces to promote student activism? Free speech and um, academic freedoms are the cornerstones of uh, values of university. And we've seen a lot of inci uh, incidents that Hong Kong students are locked, um, like they're, they're unable to express their opinion freely because there are some pressure from the Chinese side. And we've seen the extraterritorial effect of the national security law, which makes the speech of, for example, a student in the UK, um, when they talk about China criticizing the human rights violation, it may be subjected um, for criminal um, a proceeding in Hong Kong uh, because of the extraterritorial nature of the national security law. So these things indeed intrude, uh, intrude our uh, free speech and academic freedom. I think the university has to provide more mechanism to protect them and to make sure that um, these intimidation, especially from China, uh, does not get into the campus. Do you feel your experience as a leader in your student union, Nguyen Yanga, has laid the foundation for your path as an activist? Um, definitely, I, I think um, being part of the leadership in a student union is a very valuable part of my life. Uh, when you were a student, you didn't really have um, much intertwined interest. Uh, you were not working for a salary. It, it makes um, the, the efficacy that you had with a certain innocence and, and idealism. And when you're working in the student union, you could also experience those like tedious stuff, administrative stuff, dealing with a big institutions like your university. So I think these are a really valuable experience. Um, and, and this is actually the, the only thing that our student um, could enjoy. Like if you are out of the society, if you are earning a salary, people expect um, you to be different from, from a student's position. So I think these, these things are, are very valuable. Um, when I was a student leader, I always encouraged people to join um, at groups and unions like that um, in order to have a voice and like, get to know about these big institutions and how to deal with them. Do you think there is enough awareness about the changing political climate in mainland China and Hong Kong in the West? In general, um, the 2019 protest movement in Hong Kong uh, was being captured wildly by uh, media around the world. I'm sure everyone has seen something like a big protest in Hong Kong in the headlines of newspapers in the UK. So I think that awareness has been growing um, and we could also see that translate into um, China policy. Uh, we've seen a drastic change in terms of the British policy in the past one and a half year. Um, I think it's a really good trend and uh, for me, the reason why we've experienced uh, global democracy decline for the past decades, one, one of the major reasons is uh, we're just too complacent to the rise of authoritarian, authoritarian country like China. And for now, we are taking, uh, we will start to take it seriously and it's um, definitely a good start to try to save our democracy. So, 
going off of that, what can be done in university campuses specifically to promote awareness of international affairs? University plays an important role to educate people and to produce knowledge. So having more awareness campaign and activities like inviting activists, journalists to talk about what's happening around the world plays a key role to inform students and to maybe shape their well field and they could produce more knowledge about it to create a good um, a, a pathway for more people knowing the, these important things. So I think uh, we all play a part in the campus. Um, organizers can organize activities Journalists, student journalists can report more, um, ordinary students could join more and, and, and share more. I think it, it, we are in a relatively safe environment to express and to learn. I think we should uh, um, and, and, and capture and utilize that. Um, you've mentioned previously the importance of hope in activist movements. Um, how do you maintain hope and faith in possible political change? The political situation in Hong Kong is definitely dire. I, I don't think we will see major changes in, in a few years. Um, but for me, I think, as an activist, we're not entitled to lose hope. Um, my duty is to empower and enli enlighten people, um, so that to encourage them to fight for what they believe and to precipitate positive social change. So I think in that sense, uh, we just have to keep everybody moving, even though we're in such a dark time. It's like we are walking in a dark tunnel, even though we, we are unable to see the glimpse of light at the end of it for now. But we just have to believe that when we keep walking, uh, we will eventually see that light. And I think that's the mentality that um, a lot of our activists are having. Um, plus, there are actually a lot of Hong Kong people that are doing things that in a very difficult political situation, and those are also um, embodying hopes um, to other people. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Nathan, for speaking to us. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's really